Mercedes has unveiled the new G-Class and the new GLK. The compact SUV offers a choice between one gasoline and six diesel engines. We're testing the 220 CDI 4MATIC with 125 kilowatts of power. It sprints from 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 8.8 .8 seconds and reaches a top speed of 205 kilometers per hour. Its blue efficiency label means official consumption is 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Even though the GLK looks pretty big from the front, it's actually 12 centimeters smaller than the competition from BMW and Audi. That enhances maneuverability and makes it more practical in urban traffic. The back end is emblazoned with the model name, extra chrome, and a double exhaust. And the GLK is fun both on and off the road. It's right at home on rough terrain. Permanent all-wheel drive, uphill climbing aids, an agility control suspension, and other assistance systems make driving a pleasure on both uneven and smooth surfaces. A special off-road technology package can add to the fun. The GLK's list price starts at 36,235 euros in Germany. Anyone needing extra off-road muscle should opt for the new G-Class. The sixth generation offers five different engines, three of them gasoline-powered and two diesels. We're testing the G300 CDI with 135 kilowatts in the special G Professional version. For this guy, even water up to 60 centimeters deep is no problem. Requiring 11.7 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers, the six-cylinder engine isn't very economical, but very dependable off-road. Thanks not least to multiple assistance systems. The completely reworked ESP now includes a hold function and a trailer stabilizer. Rigid axles and three electrical differential locks further enhance performance on rough terrain. But anyone thinking this car can drive itself off-road is mistaken. Instructor Erwin Vonisch says the most important thing is the seating position. You shouldn't sit too far back and keep adjusting your grip. Never grab over your hand except on fast curves. That way you always have at least one hand on the wheel if you hit a rock or a hole. So you don't steer in some other direction or put the car in a position that you'll hit something. That often happens when the car isn't steered right. Starting list price for the model we're testing is 66,759 euros in Germany. More sport-minded drivers can also choose among several AMG models. The G63 AMG packs a huge 400 kilowatts. The 5.5-liter eight-cylinder engine accelerates in 5.4 seconds to 100 kilometers per hour. Top speed is electronically pegged at 210 kilometers per hour. And at 13.8 liters consumption, it's a thirsty engine too. This off-road monster also has its price, 137,500 euros in Germany. And if money is no object, the 50 kilowatt stronger G65 AMG can be had for 264,000. Today, our tester Matas Kurat is testing out two very powerful models, which together generate close to 700 kilowatts, or 1,000 horsepower, the Jaguar XKR and the BMW 650i. BMW 6 Series is now available in the three body styles, coupe, four-door grand coupe, and convertible. As the weather's nice, Matas has chosen the soft-top convertible. 
Its roof opens in 19 seconds, even when the cars traveling add up to 40 kilometers an hour. Though it takes a while to get started, the roof folds up quickly at the end. Then it's time to take the 300 kilowatt eight-cylinder engine onto the street. The BMW accelerates from 0 to 100 in 5 seconds. Its top speed is electronically pegged at 250 kilometers per hour. The 6 Series convertible doesn't just look sporty. On country roads, the Beamer's agile handling thrills. But inside, it's pretty staid. Matis doesn't really know what to make of the interior, as it's not really sporty or elegant. He finds everything here is really big and chunky. While the monitor is very well arranged and easy on the eyes, it looks superimposed. Matis doesn't really like the interior. So much for the BMW. Now Matis turns his attention to the Jaguar. The XKR also comes as a coupe, but for comparison, he's picked the convertible. With 375 kilowatts, it not only boasts more engine power than the BMW, its roof opens a second quicker, too. When starting the engine, the gear shifter rises elegantly out of the central console. Then we're off for a test drive. The 375 kilowatt engine rockets the car from 0 to 100 in just 4.8 seconds. The convertible version of the XKR reaches a top speed of 250 kilometers an hour. The Jag offers great driving performance and comfortable handling. On the inside, its cockpit adds to the car's refined appearance. Our tester says the interior of the Jaguar XKR is very elegant and that the car's designers have managed to combine elegance and sportiness. He finds that everything is very well integrated and that there are few controls to get in his way. He really likes these seat adjusters with a chrome trim and piano lacquer finish in the middle. At the front, there's no mistaking it. This car is clearly a Jaguar. The XKR's exterior is characterized by the same sporty elegance as its interior. The large air intakes on the hood only underscore this impression. The BMW looks bulkier and broader than its British competitor. Its distinctive double kidney front grille and other signature design elements make it immediately evident that this can only be a Beamer. To complete the picture, Matas gives us a peek under the hood. Here's the 4.4-liter twin-turbo engine. The Jaguar XKR uses compressors, rather than turbochargers, to rev up its 5-liter V8. When it comes to engine power, the Jaguar has the edge. But what about trunk space? Convertibles generally have limited room for cargo. 
The BMW has the smaller motor, but the bigger trunk. Mata says he's able to fit quite a bit in here, while the Jaguar XKRs is quite puny. Mata says both of the cars he's driven today are very exclusive, and that this is reflected in their prices. The BMW 650i sells for around 95,000 euros in Germany, the Jaguar XKR for 114,000. But he notes that money is no object for buyers of cars like these. They buy it because they like it, or to stand out in a crowd. Of the two, the Jaguar is more eye-catching, and there are fewer of them on German streets than 6 Series BMWs. Montes also prefers the Jag's elegant lines, which is why he declares the XKR the winner. Some 12% more exhibitors this year came to the 2012 Life and Tire Show in Essen. This year's focus was on economical driving with optimized tires. Up to 30% savings are possible. New tire labels have all the info on the latest models. The green tires on the Renault Twizy show that they're especially eco-friendly. Production used chemicals especially easy on the environment. And Lang Sess has introduced a new app. It's made to help drivers calculate their tires' fuel consumption. You enter the car's data and annual distance driven. The app then shows how much you can save by increasing the air pressure or changing your driving style. Alligator has installed a programmable tire pressure sensor. It works with existing warning systems and indicates pressure losses. A family of four and five suitcases. It all fits into a classic family-sized van with no problem. But what about the permissible weight? Marco Schäpe of the German Automobile Club says every car has a maximum permissible weight. It's included in the vehicle papers and can vary according to the car's optional features. That's why getting your car weighed could be sensible. Just to find out what the car weighs, with a full tank but otherwise empty. When you then add four or five people on board, there might not be that much weight left for luggage. But in many cars, the additional load capacity is too low in relation to what the car could carry. So the ADAC tested and rated the additional load capacity of family cars. On many models, for instance this Renault Scenic, the car's actual weight is substantially higher than what's indicated in the car papers. Often good extra features are to blame. The ADAC Stefan Giuliani says when buying a new car you should be aware that especially luxurious extras can make the car much heavier. That's at the expense of loading capacity. Extras can add 100 kilos, but don't show up in the official empty weight in the papers. Many people drive with overloaded cars, but probably only a handful are aware of it. We loaded this car up to its maximum permissible weight with water canisters, each weighing 20 kilos. The Renault's many extras soon make themselves felt. The maximum permissible weight is reached after just 20 canisters, or just over 400 kilos of weight. Anyone going beyond this limit could get in trouble in Germany. Marco Schäpe says violators could face fees, fines, or even points. It depends on by how much the car has been overloaded. With passenger cars, it gets really expensive at about 20% when you pay a 95 euro fine and get three points on your license. Overloaded cars cause other problems too. 
Auch die Fahrdynamik the car's handling also changes enormously, says Stefan Giuliani. Not just on curves, the braking distance also increases, fuel consumption also rises, as does the wear and tear on the car and its components. The VW Caddy performed very well. With its 620 kilos additional capacity, it was in the family car top 10 with the greatest additional load capacity. The difference to the Renault Scenic was soon apparent. This year marks the 25th Jubilee of the Kitzbühel Alpine Rally, one of Europe's most popular car festivals. The event features over 200 historic vehicles showing off around Kitzbühel over three days. Racing legend Hans Joachim Stuck is honorary president at the rally. He drives a 1973 model Porsche 914. It's time to ascend the Alpine path. Quite a struggle for older cars like this 1936 LG 45, but with 150 horsepower and a 4.5 liter engine, not an impossible feat. Tailing the Alfa Romeo Spider is a 1956 Beetle, which can boast having taken part in the Mille Miglia. It has only 60 horses, but thanks to a skillful driver, it's not even holding back a Porsche. Now Hans Joachim Stuck shows us how it's done in a sports car, like his Porsche 914. We've reached the first checkpoint of the day. This driver tells us the women drive together because they like to argue. <laughs> but seriously, she's here for the cars, the surroundings, and to have a good time. The Porsche drivers are somewhat more ambitious. Hans Joachim said he loved the ride, his car, and his great company. Asked whether it can still burn rubber, and boasts of its acceleration on the mountain roads and calls his 914 a blend of Porsche and Volkswagen. With its wide array of classic cars taking part, VW is a fitting company to sponsor the Kitzbühel Alpine Rally. It's afternoon and time for the drivers to abandon their classic models for the new VW Up. It takes a lot of concentration to drive the old cars, even for Hans Joachim. But for him, that's part of the fun. He says the eight hours he spent in his 914-4 Porsche earlier is an experience you don't get anymore. It was great to drive with an open roof through the Tyrolean landscape in sunny weather. Having to concentrate on changing gears, minding the brakes and paying attention to the engine is pure driving compared to new cars where everything is automatic. Among the sports cars and sedans, historic VW buses are also being taken for a spin. Forty years ago, countless hippies drove these vans from Europe to India. But today, they are driving back to Kitzbühel, in time for the final parade. It truly is a piece of history. In charge of Volkswagen Classic, Eberhard Kittler explains the importance of bringing diverse groups of cars onto the scene to show the continuity of their technical design. For many participants, arriving in Kitzbühel is the high point of the rally. Hundreds of spectators turn out to watch the parade of classic cars wend their way through the cobblestone streets. It awakens memories for Hans Joachim. 
He remembers how his father broke a mountain record with his legendary auto union. He earned a perfect sheet in the driving test today and feels he is reliving his father's success. It gives him goosebumps. Whether or not they've won in any of the festival's many categories, for most people it's the taking part that counts. But Hans Joachim can be proud of winning one part of the Kitzbühel Alpine Rally, the regularity test.